Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about how we protect the ship from rusting, uh, namely cathodic protection. But first, here's a word from the museum. Hello everyone. My name is John Quinesso, better known as Johnny Q on the Battleship New Jersey. I am a Navy veteran, having served aboard an LSM that's a landing ship medium in the Asiatic Pacific Theater during World War II. After I left the Navy in 1946, I sort of lost my sea legs, but in the year 2004, I regained them by becoming a docent on board the BB-62. What an honor it is to serve and explain to the tourists about what this great lady has done for our country. When they hear that she has served for 48 years during World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Persian Gulf conflict, they are amazed. I could go on and on about her exploits, but I will save that for the tourists. So, during this fundraiser, would you please donate to help the battleship today? Thank you. Ships use an ungrounded wiring system, uh, an ungrounded delta type system it's called, which tends to have three phases, 440 power going through the ship. Uh, and because ships themselves are floating, the wiring system is different from your house in that it isn't grounded, it doesn't have a ground. Uh, so if one of those wires shorts out, stray electrical current goes right into the hull of the ship. And the hull of the ship is made out of ferrous metals, so it's conductive. Now, I've worked on ships with grounds on them, uh, putting an electrical current into the hull of the ship doesn't mean when you touch the ship you're going to electrocute yourself. Uh, it's spread out over a very, very large area. The problem is that electric current going through the hull of the ship uh, will remove electrons from the metal and cause the metal to start to lose mass and corrode. It'll also cause the paint to pop off the side of the ship, and the paint is our primary uh, protection against rust. If there's no paint against the steel, well then there's moisture against the steel and that can cause corrosion. So, uh, you don't just have to worry about your ship's electric current. We've got ground detectors on the ship so we can tell if there's a ground, if those systems are working. <sighs> the electric current doesn't always come from the ship. If there's a ground, say here in the pier, where we've got recessed lighting, then that electrical current goes into the water, which is also very conductive, and then into the hull of the ship. Most ships use a passive system of cathodic protection. They have uh, usually zinc anodes, but typically uh, a less noble metal than steel. Uh, so the idea is that the uh, anode is sacrificial. The zinc will sacrifice itself for the steel. Uh, we see this happen a lot with dissimilar metals, where, say, where the bronze propeller shafts or propellers are attached to the shafts, the bronze is the more noble metal. It will not corrode, but the steel shafts will corrode to protect the bronze. So uh, the aft part of the ship, in particular, is covered in zinc anodes, and the zinc sacrifices itself for the steel. Uh, the the anodes are all over the ship. For a ship this size, there would probably be a couple hundred of them. And in 1990, when this ship was last in dry dock, those zinc anodes were renewed. Uh, they were probably directly welded onto the hull of the ship, and that was to serve the ship while she was in the mothball fleet. Since she has been here as a museum, uh, those zinc anodes have not been changed. So by about the year 2000, these things and a non-moving vessel like this, a permanently moored vessel, are probably only good for about a decade. Uh, they're almost certainly gone. 
we do plan to dry dock the ship at some point, and uh, when we do that, we will renew the zinc anodes. However, that's a little bit down the line. Because we're a permanently moored vessel, we've been using an active uh, cathodic protection system. Uh, the system involves cables which run from the pier into the seabed underneath where the uh, ship is permanently moored. So those cables are leaking a measured amount of electricity into the water and therefore into the hull of the ship, which is what the steel is supposed to have in terms of a charge. Here's the ship, here's where we are right now. These wires, well, one set goes up, you know, from land, brings the power in, but then this goes down and they have wires that go in the riverbed under the ship, here, and this goes aft, it's two. And then the south tower has the same thing, comes up, goes here, and aft. So when I'm doing this test, I am just checking the voltage, uh, resistance and all, that makes sure everything, we have power coming in, yada, yada, yada. Now the 90 day test, we're actually testing the voltage, I'll be going on the ship, all these points, Say them, one, three, five, six, and then uh, two, four, six, eight on the side. And I'll show you that too. And I have to drop this in the river. And that measures the voltage to the ship, to the ground to the ship. So and I write that because you'll see they do change. When I drop this into the water, depending on how fast the tide is going, and it's moving pretty good, it will change some of my readings. Not by much, but, you know, I just make note of it, and they say, hey, they're really way out, you know. Well, the tide was really moving that day. Okay, so check it incoming. Now, this is my incoming power, and this is the outgoing going into the river, you know, and into the wires into the river. So I'm checking the voltage. Now this gets plugged in here now, okay? All right. I think I'm on. Give me a second here, little bolts. You know, hard thing is I gotta get a good. The hardest thing here is like being painted and everything. Get a good connection. Yeah. It's a little crazy. Yeah, 0.44. That's what I'm gonna just call it. Call it point. We test our impressed current cathodic protection system um, about once a month. We go out and just verify that the system is running correctly. And then uh, every three months, we go out and we use a multimeter to test how much current is in the uh, water and in the ship's hull. If you're a boat owner, you might already be familiar with this concept. As many privately owned boats also use zinc anodes uh, for, for much of the same way we do. Even fiberglass hauled boats have to protect their rudders and propellers and propeller shafts. Back when I worked on Taney, uh, and I use this as an example because I've seen that ship out of the water and I have not yet seen New Jersey out of the water, uh, we found that the zinc anodes towards the bow corroded much more quickly than the ones, say, along the bilge keel amidships or towards the stern. There was a greater concentration towards the stern because of all the dissimilar metal, but the bow was corroding faster. The ship was docked uh, with the bow in towards Baltimore City and the stern out towards the harbor. So we believe that the reason for those corroding faster, uh, particularly on the starboard side where we were up against the pier as opposed to the port side, which was more open, was because of electric current from the pier and the city uh, leaking into the harbor and therefore the ship. On Taney, 
her propellers were removed during a previous dry docking. This helps prevent dissimilar metal corrosion and it keeps the propellers from weighting down the shaft and damaging the packing where the propeller shaft passes through the hull, uh, which would cause leaking. Battleship New Jersey, uh, having not been in dry dock since she was turned into a museum ship, still has her propellers on. When we do finally dry dock the ship, we will have to make a determination on if we want to remove them or not. Battleship Massachusetts retained her propellers that are mounted on the skegs, which are less likely to uh, damage the glands by crushing, but removed their propellers, which were mounted on propeller shafts. I am loath to remove any part from the ship because once it gets removed from the ship, we don't have control over it anymore. And it's a heck of a lot of scrap metal there in manganese bronze. Uh, if it's on the ship, I know it is safe. If we remove it from the ship, who knows what happens to it. Uh, that said, if it is going to lead to the ship corroding or flooding, that's more damaging to the artifact as a whole than it would be to remove those propeller shafts. So again, uh, when we do finally uh, raise the money to dry dock the ship, which uh, we're currently in the middle of a capital project to redeck the entire ship, which you've probably heard about on our channel before, uh, that is a multi-million dollar project that we're currently raising money for. At the conclusion of that project, dry docking would probably be one of the next uh, capital projects that we try to raise money for, and that will also be a uh, multi-year fundraising project in order to get the money we need to dry dock the ship. When Missouri went into dry dock in 2009, it cost them roughly $22 million. So uh, for a museum like us that has roughly a $4 million annual budget, that is $22 million on top of that annual budget we would have to raise. Battleship Jersey doesn't only use zinc anodes on the exterior hull for protection. We also use it in the interior bilges where water would sit and in uh, tanks such as the condensers beneath the engines. Uh, those tanks tend to be made out of bronze as well and so built in a steel ship and with steam and water constantly going through them, they were subject to corrosion. Are you familiar with cathodic protection? Have you used it before on your ship or in some other use? I'm told that uh, oil pipelines also use different systems for cathodic protection. Let us know in the description down below how you're familiar with it. If you would like to test cathodic protection for yourself, there's a link in the description for a, a little activity uh, using a battery and some common household pieces of metal. Also in the description is a way you can support the museum. We do receive operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, as well as other private and public organizations, including many viewers like yourselves. If you want to support the museum and our YouTube channel in particular, check that link out. Your support thus far has allowed us to make videos multiple times a week. If you want to be notified when we're putting out new content, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.